Welcome back. Today, we're gonna see how a servo motor actually works by using a digital logic analyzer to break it down. But before we get into it, this video is sponsored by Digilent with their new Analog Discovery 3. It's a lightweight and portable measurement device that's perfect for any maker. So this is a servo motor. It's just a DC motor that has an integrated gear train, a shaft encoder, and some control logic so it's easier to use. Um, and they come in a few different sizes depending on what you need them for and how much weight they need to move. So for projects like robots or RC cars, you need a motor that has some higher torque. But for something like one of these Lucky Cats, you can use a lower powered servo motor. Also, servo motors are generally limited for the range of motion. There's usually a hard stop using a pin at either 90 or 180 degrees. But there are also some continuous servos and like that name, implies they can do a full rotation. The one I have here is continuous and I'm actually gonna use the 83 to drive it. Usually when you do a project like this, you'd plug it into like a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino, but we're gonna go straight to the source of how these are working. Wiring wise, it's a pretty simple setup. Power and ground from the servo are connected to positive five volts and ground from the 83 along with the signal pin being connected to the wave gen output from the 83. I also have the positive channel from the oscilloscope connected in line with the wave gen signal and the negative channel connected to ground. Luckily, Digiland included this really helpful sheet inside of the box for you to reference so you don't have to memorize which wire is which. There are a lot of them. And I really like how versatile the 83 is, right? Like it's a single tool, like one piece of hardware I'm using as a waveform generator to create the PWM signals for the servo. I'm using it to generate the supply load for the servo. And I'm also using it as an oscilloscope to then measure back the PWM signals that I'm sending. And that's just like the start of what this thing can do. There's so many more options. But speaking of PWM signals, that stands for pulse width modulation, which is a cool technique that rapidly turns digital signals on and off to simulate an analog signal through that ratio of on to off time. And it looks like this. It's just like a square wave where the time between each pulse is the pulse width. And that's what you're adjusting to change the simulated analog signal. And now that I have this hardware all wired up, I can jump into the waveform software to actually drive it. So first I'm gonna set up the supply to actually power the servo. To do this, I'm gonna start at the home screen and just add a supply on the left side column. And there's only a couple things we need to adjust here. First, I'll make sure that the negative supply is off. We don't need that for a servo. We're only gonna be using positive supply. And then I'll make sure that the positive supply is set to five volts. And I'm also gonna use the waveform generator to set up the PWM signal. So going back to that welcome tab, I can add the wave gen option. Now once I've added the wave gen, I'm gonna change the type to square. Also, I'm gonna make sure that the amplitude is five volts. Um, to actually change the angle of the servo, you're gonna play with the period variable, which is the pulse width. In general, zero degrees is about a one millisecond pulse width and 90 degrees is about one and a half seconds pulse width. Um, it's gonna really depend on your servo exactly, it could vary a little bit. But once I have the variables all set, I can go ahead and enable the waveform. And based on the period, you'll see the servo move. And it's really cool being able to just type numbers into the software and see how that has an actual effect on the position of the servo. Now there's one more thing we can do just for fun to just like check our work, right? So the 83 has a built-in oscilloscope, which I hooked up earlier. And if I go back to the main window, I can add that to my waveforms as well. And when I run that, I can actually see the signal that's being generated by the 83. I'm just kind of reading it back. You know, the oscilloscope is looking at the signals that it's connected to and it's just showing it to you. Of course, it's the exact same one as the waveform generator because it's coming from the same place. But if you were, say, debugging this on an Arduino, you could use the oscilloscope to make sure and check that you're getting the right signal since you're not generating them yourself. You're just telling the code where to put the servo. I'm really liking the 83 from Digilent. It's pretty simple. It just connects your computer via USB-C for data and power. And the waveform software is available for macOS, Windows, and Linux. And it's pretty portable. I mean, you can just put this in your backpacks. It's perfect for a student or anyone who doesn't have that like bench top equipment. You know, I would have really liked having this back when I was taking my circus classes so I could debug my projects outside of the labs. Personally, I prefer to try and find more smaller compact tools that don't compromise on any features so that they're out of my way when I don't need them and they don't leave me wanting more or needing another tool when I do need them. If you wanna get one for yourself, be sure to check out that link down below the like button. But thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos about 3D printing, making, and DIY projects. Here's a video about making a dice case, and here's a video that YouTube thinks you're gonna like the best.